It is 11 a.m. Central Time, and we are back with Big Talk from Small Libraries 2020. I'm Krista Porter, your host here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, Big Talk from Small Libraries, we are sponsored by uh, the Association for Rural and Small Libraries and the Nebraska Library Commission. And we have presentations all day today uh, from libraries from, who are in populations of towns or um, at universities or colleges where their FTE is 10,000 or less. And next up with us is a one of what I'm, um, I love all of our presentations today, but this is one that's a little close to my heart. Um, that's, it's there from the State University of New York at Delhi, SUNY Delhi. I am actually originally from New York. I went to SUNY Binghamton and SUNY Albany. Um, so um, they're from my home state. Um, and I, I am a gamer, I am a geek, I'm a nerd, all of the above. So um, I'm gonna be very jealous of all the great things that these guys get to do at the, when they were at their college. So um, I will just hand it over to you, Caitlin and Liz, to uh, introduce yourself and tell us all about your uh, awesome cons that you did. Great, thank you so much. So my name is Caitlin Barodi and I have Liz Santabono here with me. Um, as we said, we are from SUNY Delhi um, in upstate New York, a nice rural community. Um, and we're here to talk to you today about our experience running a couple of library con events the past couple of years. We're excited to share to you the good and the bad and the ugly um, and everything <laughs> in between that we have learned over the past couple of years sort of as this event has evolved. So. Liz is going to start by giving you a little bit of background about, you know, SUNY Delhi, where we are, the kind of community that we serve, as well as sort of our library con origin stories. Let her take it away. All right. So as Kate already mentioned, we are a smaller, more rural uh, college community with uh, an FTE of 3,100 students approximately. Um, our mix, we get people all across the state. So although we're very rural, a lot of people that are, well, a lot of students that are here are coming from a more urban environment. So we're always trying to, as a library, give them, provide them a, a space that, you know, kind of meets all of their needs. And this is kind of where library can evolved from. So the origin story, I think, is what I'm supposed to be talking to you about. Um, so I was in an office with another librarian. We were just chatting things up, and she was bragging all about Comic-Con, which was months away, by the way. So, you know, if you're into that kind of thing, this happens months in advance. Um, and I said, I made the mistake of saying, <laughs> what exactly is all the hype about? And let me just say, I got an earful. Um, oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so while she was filling me in about all the great things that make Comic-Con what it is, I being a more new to programming person was like, oh, well, maybe we should do this in Delhi. I mean, if my librarian friend is this excited, maybe we should do it here. Maybe other people feel the same way. Um, and of course, our director, who is also a fellow geek, she's a Star Wars geek, had overheard this conversation, pops in and says, hey, I give you the green light, go. Um, so that she wasn't works. a very hard sell at all. <laughs> so I, that's what got everything rolling. So we're going to break it down between year one and year two because we had a lot of um, growth uh, between the two years. So year one was in 2018. Um, we kind of grabbed a superhero theme because Marvel at the time was super, super big in theaters. It really kind of still is. Um, and so we also wanted to keep it broad, and I felt like grabbing a superhero theme kind of lended itself to that. Um, we tried to do a little bit of something for everyone, and you can see on our slide how many different things we offered. Um, again, a little something for everyone. We did do it on a Tuesday evening. Our students, like I said before, you know, they're very transient. They go home on the weekend, so it was more beneficial to do it. We figured on a Tuesday night, that was when our library numbers were usually pretty, you know, they were up um, from five to nine. So just a couple pictures of our event. This was our faculty panel. It was super well attended. I will say that they may have offered some extra credit to their students. But still, there was a lot of good dialogue, a lot of good questions after, you know, each of the presenters uh, finished their, their talk. Um, on the next slide, we have board games. So that was a really nice, for me anyway, coming into the Comic-Con 
realm of things. It was a really neat surprise for me. I saw a lot of geekiness at, <laughs> at the board games, and they were always packed. Um, I had no idea that these types of board games could take hours to play. Um, and we had students that would come in, they would see the board games, get interested, they would run to the vendor, buy a starter pack, and then come mm -hmm. back and play the game. It was really, really exciting to see. That's exactly um, so, how it's supposed to work. That's awesome. Everybody wins. <laughs> you and the players and the vendors. <laughs> so it was all hands on deck. Um, it ended up being super big. We'll talk about that a little more in a minute. But um, we had wonderful staff support. So in the lower left corner, you'll see my buddy Kate and our fellow librarian slash Comic-Con enthusiast, uh, Jen. They just had completed a escape room, Harry Potter themed. We had like a little test run beforehand to make sure it all went smoothly. Being a guinea pig is fun. Yeah, <laughs> yep, it was super cool. Mm -hmm. And then in the upper right were all of the staff that were just on hand. We had a uh, selfie photo booth. So in the throes of the chaos of that night, which again, I'll <laughs> tell you more about in a little bit, we managed to snap a quick picture before we got too exhausted. Yep. So year one, what went right? So we had a huge turnout. We kind of came into it thinking 50 people would be considered it a success. We would be really excited with 100. Well, we ended up with over 400. Um, so again, I'll talk Whoa. about it a little bit more later. We were we were underprepared, um, but yes. almost in a good way. <laughs> right, right. We were happy to have that problem, but it gave us a lot to think about for the following year. Right, right. It is um, a good problem, a terrifying problem, I'm sure. Was, we <laughs> refer to that year as the fever dream because <laughs> nobody really remembers what happened those two hours. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And we just knew that our feet were really sore. Yes. <laughs> um, so escape rooms were super amazingly popular. Escape room, I should say. The Harry Potter thing. It, the students booked it out in the first hour that we were open. And then we had many of anxious, many anxious students kind of hovering around the desk saying, hey, hey, did yeah. anyone cancel? Are they not coming? I want to dive in. Um, like I mentioned before, the board games, they were really fun. I know I learned a lot about, you know, sure. all, all the things board games. It was super cool. And the, the vendors were a fantastic hit. They were a great addition. We needed to have them. So what could have gone better? We kind of alluded to it a little bit. <clears throat> so we weren't prepared for the mass number of people. We ran out of event bags, so we were constantly uh, running up and down the stairs, printing things to just try and put some sort of event bag together or get them flyers. We were just not ready. Um, the raffle tickets, I'll own to it. It was a little bit <laughs> of a late afterthought right before the event. So there was kind of a separate half sheet that was tucked into the event bag and it was kind of confusing. Um, and the raffle tickets went into the door prizes, which, you know, students want those prizes. Um, the comic strip contest, again, you know, we put out a lot of different feelers for a lot of different things that first year. Um, and the comic strip contest, it just had low participation. We, uh, I think we had two, it was beautiful. They did beautiful artwork, but it was, it was low. Mm -hmm. um, and disrupted student study space. So more specifically, we have a very dedicated base of nursing students that, that come every night and they were a little cranky that <laughs> the volume was a little higher than they anticipated. So something to think about for next year. Um, and because it was our first year, it was also my first program that was on this scale. I held on to things like a nervous Nelly. Mm -hmm. So I didn't delegate well. So it ended up being very stressful. Yeah. Liz was a rock star and she really pulled it off, but you know, we knew for future events things need to be delegated a little bit more just for yeah. her sanity. I, I feel like I might have lost a few years off my life with yeah. that one. <laughs> okay, so let me give you an overview view of year two. Um, the main differences between year one and year two in terms of how we planned it, the biggest thing was that we moved it to a weekend evening instead of a weeknight. Um, happened to be the weekend before Halloween. We weren't sure what impact this would have on our attendance, just because, mm -hmm. like Liz said, we do have that transient student population, and a lot of them aren't around on weekends. Um, but we knew that we wanted to try it on a weekend, and this seemed like the year to do it. Um, also, the close proximity to Halloween helps with the costumes, because if people already have their costumes ready for Halloween, they can kind of wear it to library con mm -hmm. as well. Why not? Um, mm -hmm. We also expanded to both floors of the library this time. Um, the first year we were sort of confined to the first floor, but as the event grew and as we brought in more 
things for them to do. We expanded to both floors and we did let students know ahead of time this year about the study space disruption. Um, another thing we added, we were able to do a showing of the movie Hocus Pocus the Friday before the event as sort of a promo. Um, our student activities department was able to sponsor that, which we were very grateful for. Um, I think it did bring some light to the fact that this event was happening. We did have a pretty good turnout. About 10 students showed up mm -hmm. in their pajamas. I was say, those jammies were super cute. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we popped some popcorn and showed the movie and they had a good time. Mm -hmm. um, and then the main thing that helped us grow from year one to year two was we had much more campus wide involvement. Um, you can see just the list of things that we were able to offer expanded so much. You know, we were able to pull on a lot of the different clubs and interests that we have around our campus. So things like the Gamer Lounge, we have an anime and gaming club and they were kind of in charge of that. Our architecture club held the Lego build. Um, you know, we had the vendors, the local public library was able to bring two escape rooms this time instead mm -hmm. of just one, just because those were so popular. Um, faculty involvement, you can see in the picture that we have there, we have a faculty member who is super into D&D. So he made a station that was just a create your own D&D character station. That was a huge hit. Um, his wife happens to be a very avid cosplayer. So she did a little lightning talk and had her costumes and props and things there. Um, our computer club had a VR set headset that they set up and let students do a little VR station. It was just, it was really cool to see how different areas of the community and our campus were able to come together and just contribute their own kind of thing and it contributed to the whole event. So mm -hmm. definitely we're able to offer a lot more. It's nice, I think, to have those kind of smaller things. I mean, some people may be more intimidated by come to this event or area to play D&D when they've never right. done it before. Just do the, mm -hmm. the beginning part, just do to create a character, get the idea. Some other time you can actually get into actually doing it. So it gets a little taste or a little tease. Yeah, exactly. And I think that works well when, you know, they're able to move from sort of one station to another and it's a very sort of fluid environment like that. Mm -hmm. So just to show you some pictures, some of our costumes um, on the right is our photo booth station with a few little fun props. The top photo is our vendor, Bearded Dragon Games and Comics. They were, they're both years, total hit. Um, bottom left was our crafting stations mm -hmm. where students were able to make their own wands and paint masks and picture frames. So our students here really love crafting. So we knew that they would gravitate towards that right away. And they did. Totally needed a geeky craft station. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then the bottom right is just our architecture club with their Lego build which, you know, students, everybody at all ages, I think, can appreciate Legos, so that mm -hmm. was popular as well. Um, this is Barbara, our cosplay expert on the left. She, like I said, brought her props and costumes and talked to students about how she made them, and she was a very busy lady all night. Yes, she, she had people swarming her all night with questions, yeah. and um, she also did our costume contest as yeah. well. She was the, the judge's choice. Mm -hmm. And just to show you a few more of our costume contest, contest entries, um, they really came from a really wide variety of pop culture areas, which I think is great. There was a little something for everybody. Um, this was at the end of the night when we were announcing our costume contest winner, both the People's Choice and Judge's Choice, and doing some prize drawings there at the end. So you can see, you know, the students put together some really great costumes. I was impressed. <laughs> And of course, we had staff involvement too. Um, because the event was so close to Halloween and we like to do a staff coordinated costume each year, we decided to combine them and we did Star Wars. Um, so we were able to wear that for Library Con and Halloween as well. So if you can get your staff involved, it sort of encourages everybody to have fun. Yeah. Got a kind of tall Yoda there, but that's okay. Kind of a tall Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> Not much you can do about that. Okay, so what went right with year two? The additional escape room was very appreciated. Um, full. It was full yet again. Um, they brought back their Harry Potter escape room, as well as the Rocky Horror Picture Show themed escape room, which was very popular because our campus drama club had just done Rocky Horror the previous oh semester. So mm -hmm. there was definitely a good interest in that. Another thing that we were really proud of with year two was the geek inclusivity, was what we like to call <laughs> yes. it. So 
we were just really trying to have a little something for everyone, even if you're not, you know, the traditional geek, but you just want to come in and do a craft or something. That's awesome. Um, and I think that kind of gathered a collection of, you know, more diverse students for yeah. sure. Um, better signage this year. The first year was a little confusing about where everything was. So we made a point to make better signage, but there still was room for improvement. I, my best advice with the signs for the event is make them bigger than you think you need. Um, mm. Most of the ones that I made that we hung from the ceiling or around the building were composed of like two 11 by 17 papers that I had put together, which seems huge when they're crowding my small office. But then once you get them <laughs> out there in the building, you know, we have a decently sized space and it doesn't quite have the same effect that you expected. <laughs> so that's another thing on our list for mm -hmm. next year. Um, Cosplay demonstration, as I said, was super popular. The help from other student groups and departments was huge. I mean, I can't say enough about that. That's really what we want to emphasize to you guys more than anything is pull on your community, see what people are willing to contribute and how they geek. Um, and that can save you money, effort, and it can just really help to grow your event. But, and if they're coming and they're excited, it's hard not to share yeah. any excitement as a new student coming in and going, hey, what's D&D? &D? Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. this costume contest? Yeah, I think that, that helps with the, the, as you said, as you, as you label it, the geek inclusivity. <laughs> there are so many different things that people are interested in. Um, it's huge. It's insane to even try and keep up with all of it. <laughs> yeah. Everybody can find something. Yeah. And lastly, the ticketing went more smoothly with our raffle tickets. The main change we made there is instead of giving everybody the tickets at the beginning in their goodie bag with a paper about what goes to what, we tried to give them the tickets at their point of need. So one of the things was if you fill out a survey, you get a raffle ticket, but you don't get the ticket until you fill out the survey. Or, <laughs> you know, if you go to vote for the costume contest, you get your ticket as you're voting. So mm -hmm. it made more sense. It, it, yeah, it cleared up yeah. a lot of confusion. Yeah, and all those tickets were tied to your door prizes, those mm -hmm. hourly door prizes, so. Um, that being said, there were still some things that could have gone a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, our attendance was significantly lower. I think we had about 200 students this time, which we kind of anticipated, but like I said, we mm -hmm. wanted to try having it on a weekend just to see. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's important to note that just because we only had 200 people doesn't necessarily mean it was a failure. I mean, mm -hmm. it's still 200 people. people. It's still yeah. way bigger than anything else we do. Yeah. Um, and the students who did attend were very enthusiastic, I think. And it wasn't yeah. like the ones who were there had planned to come there and they were ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, the lightning talks, we transitioned from that faculty panel to lightning talks and they were kind of poorly attended and we think that might be because they were a little too academic mm -hmm. in nature. We kind of gave the professors freedom to choose what they wanted to speak about. And I think a lot of students viewed that as too much like going to class during the week and listening yeah. to these people talk, um, even though they were doing it on, you know, more fun pop culture-y topics. Um, and also the prior year they had offered extra credit and we don't think that that happened <laughs> this year, <laughs> which, you know, is always a big incentive. Yeah. So. You know, we're looking for, that's one area that we want to change for next year and kind of encourage them to be involved in sort of a more fun, organic way, kind of like that faculty member who is very into D&D &D and did the mm -hmm. Create Your Own Character station. That worked really well. So I think sort of the key is going to be asking them, you know, what they geek and how they can contribute, mm -hmm. even if it's not in an academic right. lightning talk. And at that way. point, it's our responsibility to really figure out how to facilitate that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the costume contest entry process was a little fumbly. Um, it got bottlenecked at the beginning when everybody was coming in at the beginning of the event. And we had one person who was trying to get people to fill out an entry form, take their picture, print the picture, and then post the picture in the area mm -hmm. where the voting was. And it was just too much for one yeah. person, particularly, like I said, at the beginning when everybody was coming in. Um, so that sort of could have been streamlined a mm -hmm. little bit better. And then also, people only had one vote. So if they voted too early on in the evening and then somebody else came in with an awesome costume and was entered a little bit later, they weren't able to vote for them. Um, so that was kind of unfortunate that the people who showed up later kind of were at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we need to tweak that 
we need to tweak that for next. Like it wasn't horrible, but it's just something that could have gone a little more mm -hmm. smoothly. Um, unanticipated vendor needs. This was yeah. interesting. So we had a couple of vendors who arrived, and then we found out that they needed laptops and a Wi-Fi connection, which that's something that has to go through the IT office, and they weren't there on a weekend, and it was just that was one of the things that we ended up scrambling around to do the second year um, during the mm -hmm. event. So yeah. we definitely plan on sending them out, you know, just a questionnaire ahead of the event this year and saying, okay, what do you need? Mm -hmm. So we can get those anticipated ahead of time. And these vendors were vendors that we had had the first year who didn't have these needs the first year, but apparently needed it the second year. So mm -hmm. it was hard to anticipate. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, the cold salmon and stinky cheese. Yes. So oh. you'll see in the image there, we had, um contacted our campus catering to provide some food for this event they had done it in the first year they did a great mm -hmm. job um we had talked with them vaguely about doing some kind of mad scientist theme for the food so we were excited about that but then when the day of the event came it became kind of evident that we think they forgot about us until the day mm -hmm. of so i imagine that it was something like the show chopped if you watch that where you know you have this mystery basket and you're trying to scramble and see how you can um fit these different ingredients that you have at your disposal together so they gave us this bed of spinach with cold salmon and like craisins and corn and then a cheese plate and some veggie crudite and like we were grateful to have the food but it was really not the thing that you would anticipate eating at an event like this not at all and the mm -hmm. students let us know that both Loud at the clear. event <laughs> and in their feedback surveys the most common comment we got was cold salmon and stinky cheese that they mm -hmm. did not like so this really wasn't something that we could have anticipated but right. we want to make sure that that communication is a little better um in the future and you know obviously mm -hmm. we're able to laugh about it now yeah, but as yeah. it was happening it was just the most bizarre thing <laughs> So next things you don't can't shopping. predict. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, if nothing else. We got to laugh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. And we ordered a pizza, but <laughs> it's a different story. And we may or may not have shared it with some of the students that yeah. were desperate to get away from the salmon. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that's sort of an overview of what the each year looked like. But now we want to move into the sort of behind the scenes kind the advice. Yeah, yeah, the advice we have for you should you decide to put on an event like this? And Liz mm -hmm. is going to talk a little bit about that planning. Okay, so key elements of planning. Start early. Um, so we've already started planning for this year's Library Con. You know, tentative dates we've rolled around. Um, a couple of groups on campus have already said, hey, hey, are you doing it next year? We want back in. Or, hey, can you, you know, find room for us to try it this next year? It sounds really cool. We love hearing that. Mm -hmm. um, so we're feeling out, you know, who we're partnering with. Um, we also took a really good look over our surveys, as you know, cold <laughs> salmon and stinky cheese. Um, to see, but more importantly, to see how we're going to grow. And, you know, our students are really good about telling us what they like, what they want to see. So we take that very, very seriously. And I hope that you can see that between year one to year two, that we did a lot of growth. And a lot of that was driven by our surveys. Um, so... Find your key players and delegate to their strengths. I think if there's any one thing that's the most important out of this, it's really figuring out how your community geeks and where their strengths are. So, for example, you know, the second year we reached out to student groups. They're great. Their word of mouth, it, it, it beats nothing. It's yes. the best form of advertisement, but they need some reminders. Right. You if know? you're working with students, you know, it takes a little extra nudging sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, Yep. But they can be huge help when it comes to manpower. And oh yeah, and they're so enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. they're, they're great. They're they're worth they're worth that time. Um, faculty, they have great geeky talents. It's just a matter of pulling it out of them and figuring it out, and then showcasing it. So you know, we keep hitting up um, our uh, physics professor who loves D D and D, and you know our other professor who loves cosplay. They just, they bloomed beautifully at this yes. event. Um, but it's just a matter of figuring it out, what they like to geek about. And after that, they take off. Um, make a marketing timeline because you want to keep things fresh. If you're dealing with students, the more frequency and seeing different changes, it just keeps it in the forefront of their brain. It keeps them thinking about this really cool event that they want to be a part of. Um, outreach. 
um, it should be intentional. So like I said before, you know, students, you need a little bit more outreach than faculty and maybe a little bit more, you know, more so for faculty than you would your vendors. I mean, our vendors, I think I, second year I called them once, they said, hey, are you on board? They said, yep, give us the date and the time and we'll be there. And that was pretty much it. <laughs> They're ready to go. Um, so also have like a timeline of when you reach out for vendors, helpers, et cetera. Um, Kate can attest to this more so for her marketing piece, but color coding is your friend. Lists and color coding. Liz will tell mm -hmm. you that even just for the signage at the event, I had like a color coded list and then a different color coded list that arranged the signs in a different way and then a map that went along with the color coded list. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's better to over plan as always. And I think if there's something you think you might forget, make sure you don't. Yeah, um, yeah, that's all I can it, say to that. <laughs> it's just it's such a very busy type of program, and it's easy to forget those things. There's and a I lot think, of moving parts for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think more openly now than ever, I think we 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 geek on organizations. So yes, <laughs> that's how we geek. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank goodness, right? <laughs> so okay, a little bit more of the nitty gritty here. So how we leveraged those resources across campus. So year one, um, our helper list, we didn't have student groups. Again, it was my first year. I really wasn't sure. I was just too worried that students wouldn't be reliable. So I <laughs> didn't really grab for any of them. And I also didn't know who to grab out for, but year one was a great springboard for figuring that out. Um, community partners, we have an amazing uh, local public library, Huntington Memorial Library. When I called them up, I said, hey, you know, I heard that you do um, 3D printing. And that's when I got on the conversation of, well, hey, we also have an escape room. <laughs> and they spoke our language, so we were bonded at that point. So um, they're our partner for years to come, as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned. Um, Bearded Dragon Comics and Games, they've been with us since the start. They're also uh, just over the hill, local um, group that does all of the more classic geeky things that you would expect to be at a library con. Southside Mall Cinemas, they obviously didn't want to come to the event, but they donated some door prizes. All of our community partners, we didn't charge them to table. We just asked them to donate a door prize to save, to keep that cost And they down. were happy to do that. Yeah. I mean, it benefits them, it benefits mm -hmm. us. It just, it's a really happy relationship. Yes, there. yes, it's very good. And um, so Green Dode Bookstore also came. We had a local artist that um, did a lot of beautiful um, artwork in the theme of our event that she, I think she made, you know, Quite a, quite a killing on all of that. Our campus partners, we had campus uh, dining services. Um, don't underestimate the power of food. You know, if it's free, they're yeah. coming. Um, and I think that um, we put it right close to the entry door so they could see it. Yeah. <laughs> if they happen to wander into the library, the first thing they see is the food and then they want to see what's going on. Yep, yep, exactly. So I think that th that had a lot of power for us. Um, but if you don't have something like Caddy, um, you know, really take stock of your local area resources. Like you might be really geeky about your farmer's markets. We kind of are too. Yeah. Um, local area restaurants might want to, you know, come to campus and work with you. Um, you know, you could always reach out to the food bank or um, we also have a stellar culinary program that maybe you could, you know, leverage a little help from them as well. There, there's other options. Um, also, an all the time campus partner was our Barnes and Noble uh, bookstore on campus. They donated a lot of great prizes. And um, our, I can't say enough about our, our faculty speakers and our helpers as well. Um, so we, we're, really, we're really lucky to have a really great community of helpers right from the get-go. Year two. And you can see in year two just how much we've grown just in the area of student groups. I mean, the college players, those that's our local drama club on campus, mm -hmm. and they sort of served as MCs for the event. As I said, Anime and Gaming Club contributed the gaming lounge, computer club brought their VR headset, architecture nice. club did the Legos, mm -hmm. Meeting Professionals International is a group of our hospitality students and they just came and they ran our craft table for us and they were great at that. Um, and our campus also puts a lot of emphasis on community service. So you have students who are always looking for community service hours. So we put out a call and we got several students just to help set up the day before mm -hmm. um, and they were very helpful. Oh. Um, we've maintained those community partners. Those are largely the same as the first year. Campus partners, we added a couple more. A big one was the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement. Um, mm -hmm. We had pegged them as somebody, that a department that we might want to reach out to and see what they would like to contribute. And 
upon meeting with them, you know, we, Liz and I have always had our list of pie in the sky dreams. Like, yes, if we had unlimited budget, what would we want? Mm -hmm. And so we went in there and we really weren't sure how that meeting was going to go, but mm -hmm. we quickly found out they wanted to contribute to us, but they didn't have ideas. We had the ideas and they had the money that they wanted to throw at us. So they ended up sponsoring that um, screening of Hocus Pocus, as well as they brought in a caricature artist who mm -hmm. did free characters all night. So it, that was like beautiful for us <laughs> to hear that they just wanted to pay for something for mm -hmm. us. Um, so if you can find somebody who has money that they're looking to throw at things, mm -hmm. um, you know, that can be a huge help. But it doesn't have to be something that big. Mm -hmm. I will say, you know, the next thing on the list is the Office of Residence Life. Amazing. They had walkie-talkies that they weren't using. Mm -hmm. So we borrowed those, and that was a huge help. They had a button mm -hmm. maker that they let us borrow, and mm -hmm. we used those buttons as um, prizes right. for the escape, escape rooms. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, like, it doesn't have to be something big. Like, mm -hmm. that really didn't hurt them at all to let us borrow their walkie-talkies for one night, but it was a huge help to us. It saved our feet. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, much less walking around <laughs> in the first year. So, you know, reach out to those people if you're in an academic library on your campus or in your community. You know, you can hide a bad small budget with enough Clever. community partnerships, yeah. for sure. So just to give you a sense of the marketing timeline, I wanted to touch on when we sent everything out. So six weeks out, we put out a save the date. This went out in our campus email that goes out daily, as well as we have digital signs around campus. Mm -hmm. So I made like a little sign to put on that. Um, we also did library displays and bulletin boards both years. Liz did an yeah. awesome thing the first year where she Ooh. took all of our library staff and she photoshopped us to be different superheroes based mm -hmm. on the roles that we fill within our library and did it as sort of a meet the staff thing at the beginning of mm -hmm. the semester, which was awesome. Um, we've done bulletin boards. She and I did a Mario themed one yep. this past mm -hmm. year. So you can really do a lot to sort of build the hype within your library as well. Um, four weeks out, we put out the call for the costume contest. This just went out in the email and on those digital signs again, but the timing of this was important because it was right before our students went mm -hmm. home on fall break, and we wanted them to know that like if they have costumes at home, mm -hmm. to bring them back. And students need those reminders. They do need those <laughs> reminders, yep. Um, two weeks out, we put out a more detailed teaser because at this point we had confirmed what vendors and things mm -hmm. were going to be there. So we were able to give them a little bit more, and again, this went out um, both in that email and on the digital signs again. And then the week of the event, we did the movie showing promo. We put up tent cards, both in the library and the dining halls to sort of mm -hmm. get at those students who maybe aren't in the library that often, but yeah. they go to the dining halls. They could see mm -hmm. that this event was happening. Um, and then the email, just the week of reminding everybody that, you know, library study space is going to be disrupted. And if you mm -hmm. want to study on Sunday evening, you're going to have to find somewhere else to do it. Yep. And we didn't really get any complaints nope. the second year Not about all. that. So. That definitely worked. Mm -hmm. And I also want to say that most of this advertising, we just used Canva. If you haven't used oh, Canva, yes. it's a wonderful website for creating flyers and love Canva. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. With the zero graphic design training mm -hmm. and education, you can be a graphic designer. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's definitely helpful if you have a tiny bit of like Photoshop knowledge, but mm -hmm. you really don't need it. And yeah. I'm gonna show you the next few slides are just to give you samples of some of the marketing that we put out there. And they have great just pre-made forms that you can just plop your own information yeah, into. Their, their templates are the best and they're free. And they're free, mostly free. There is paid mm -hmm. content, but you can get around it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this was our save the date for the first year. Pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Second year, our save the date was more of a Mario theme. Mm -hmm. Just to go along with the bulletin board that we had done. Whiteboard surveys. Very this is, cool. This is a tool that I love to use. They're easy, they're free, they're fun, and they're interactive. So the first year, I put out this whiteboard at the front of our library and just said, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? And you could see that students just loved this. It got huge feedback. Um, mm -hmm. I will say, if you're working with college students, you do need to monitor this because mm -hmm. they do like to see what they can get away with. Yeah. But um, 
And then in the second year, I just asked, what library con event are you most excited about? And, you know, it didn't get as good of a response, but it's an easy way to just, at least people, when they walk in, they see that it's there and that it's happening. Um, and I also just want to say that you can use this for other non-library con questions, too. Um, I'm the assessment librarian here, so I've used this for really informal assessment just to ask things like, if you could change one thing about the library, what would it be? And it's great to just get quick, easy feedback like that. Or just if you're looking to do something fun, a couple weeks ago we asked, you know, if you could meet one fictional character, who would it be? Yep. Um, so it's kind of easy passive programming. Mm -hmm. and the only real pain with it is that you do have to monitor it and make sure nobody's writing yeah. anything profane. But um, most of the time, they're better than you think. Well, like the students do behave most of the and time. And you've got a little bit of a following. Yeah, don't forget. The more of these you do, yeah. the more people anticipate that they'll be mm -hmm. there. Um, this was our teaser for year two, so you can see a little more detail about what's going to be there. Um, this is our tent fun. card yeah. for the first year. Again, a little simpler, superhero themed. Mm -hmm. This was a tent card that we put out for year two for the Hocus Pocus screening mm -hmm. in particular. And I just, I love this tent card. It I think it's cute. so cute. It's, that was a pre-made Canva template, and I just popped in the information that we needed. Um, so... There's a lot of really it's totally free, yeah. Um, tent card for the actual mm -hmm. event from year two. Um, Classic the, library con colors. Yeah, those colors, yeah. we tried to tie everything in in the same colors, and I think Liz and I still have memorized the hex codes for that red, yellow, and blue. Mm -hmm. um, we dream in those colors. Oh, oh Lord, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And Liz is going to talk to you next about um, our schedules that we printed out both years. Yes. So what you're seeing now is the year one schedule. Um, so it's it's really cool. It's got some nice um, eye-catching colors, but here's where it kind of fell a little short. We missed out on using the back side of the page. And with these being tucked into our event bags, space was kind of important. Um, it was eye-catching and clean, but there was not enough event detail, and the layout could have been a little easier to read. Um, it, you know, when, when it's been a long night, you know, that blue on that black is a little <laughs> tough to read. I mean, they've got younger eyes than me, but, you know, got to consider those things. Um, and also in the event bag um, with this was a half sheet of um, directions with um, tickets stapled to it. Again, it kind of was a little bit of a late afterthought when we were prepping for and stuffing the bags. But we had never event. done this before, so we were kind of just freestyling. <laughs> so, you know, we ended up remedying it la the, the following year, the next year, and kind of marrying the two onto one sheet. And I'll advance the slide so you can see that. So this is year two, front and back. We kind of chunked it out according to the physical location that the event was going to happen in the library because, again, it was the weekend. We were actually taking up a lot more of the library, so we kind of needed to have a little bit more direction. Um, and like I said before, we used the backside. This is where we decided to clarify about the tickets and how they get used, but like Kate had said earlier, we started handing out the tickets at the point where they would need to mm -hmm. cash them in so we could explain it to them a lot more easily. We ended up getting a lot less clarifying questions on our ticketing system because of that. But again, our classic library con colors, <laughs> um, we're probably going to use that. It's kind of, we, we should build a logo, but I feel yeah. like this, these are our, our colors. The co colors are serving as our logo currently. Yeah, right now. It's our signature thing. Mm -hmm. And then this is just more event signage. You know, you can really do a lot to set the stage um for the event even as you're setting up you know the one on the far right just you know just little tiny things that you can add in to sort of build that environment and the mm -hmm. ambiance and get students anticipating um what will be at this event and get everybody excited and you know don't don't overlook the smaller things i guess mm -hmm. is what i'm saying but also again make the signs bigger than you think you need because <laughs> yeah. it really does help to sort of build the boundaries of where the event is happening and what's where. Um, like I said, we hung some signs from the ceiling, which helped because when you do have a crowd of people, you know, you can't necessarily see what's on the other end of the room. Mm -hmm. um, so those are helpful, but I think if you plan far enough ahead, you can do a lot with the signs. Um, there were a lot of them, but I was really pleased with the way that they ended up looking. 
you spent a lot of hours on those signs. Like I said, I made like three them. different lists. Mm -hmm. um, but the earlier you can start in on those and just kind of, it's a nice touch to add to your event. Mm -hmm. Lastly, I want to talk about assessing and debriefing. So what you see here is just a half page survey that we handed out the first year. And it was really simple. It asked three questions. What did you like the most? What did you like the least? What are your suggestions for next year? Mm -hmm. And honestly, it worked perfectly. It gave yeah. us exactly the feedback that we needed to know. It got right at the heart of everybody's opinions about how this event went. So we ended up using it the second year too. And it, Really, it just, it gives you everything that you need to know. You don't need to make it complicated. And they're kind of fun to go through. Like, you see the same things coming up yeah. over and over again. The first year, over a third of respondents said that they loved the escape rooms. And that's why we were able to get to, to, get to the next year. Um, that being said, if you see the little star in the upper right hand corner that says no bearded dragons, sometimes they yeah. comment funny things that you don't anticipate. So. We mentioned Bearded Dragon Games and Comics was our vendor. Um, at least two students, we found out through these surveys, were anticipating having live Bearded Dragons at this <laughs> event, which we oh. never would have known. Yeah. yeah, so it gave us such a good laugh that they, you know, I think in all dragons to hold and pet. They wanted them to hold and pet, they also mentioned. <laughs> you know, just funny feedback like that that, you know, you miss out on if you don't ask. Um, mm -hmm. So we gave them raffle tickets for incentive and we got really good feedback. Mm -hmm. um, and I also just want to say in terms of debriefing, write down your thoughts before you forget. I yes. won't make you do it like the evening of the event because you're exhausted and tired and brain mm -hmm. dead. But mm -hmm. the next day, write down what happened, what went well, what didn't, what mm -hmm. needs to change. Those little things you don't think you're going to forget, but you do. You do. Um, mm -hmm. And that, you know, we always write down our feedback and then we leave it for like a week or two <laughs> just oh. to recover and then you go back and you discuss. Um, so that's kind of what I have to say about assessing and debriefing that can be really helpful mm -hmm. as you go to plan in future years. The more that you can document what happened and how everybody felt about it, the better shape you'll be in to, you know, make improvements going forward that yeah. will make your future events even better. So future library cons, right? Because we're going to have another library con. We can't. We, we, we can't. Not. <laughs> uh, of course, I think you have to. Yes. <laughs> Forever and ever and ever. They love it. So we're going to move back to a weeknight. That makes perfect sense. We heard it loud and clear from them. You know, they were telling us throughout the event that, hey, we're glad that you're having it, but you do it during the week. Yeah. So yes, we can. Um, that's when they're on campus. That just makes more sense. Um, we're going to encourage fun faculty interaction. So we don't know entirely what that means. Um, we're trying to, like Kate had said, we want to get away from that academic feel um, that the students weren't all too into at the time. Um, so we're just going to try and get out of those faculty that they've come for both years. So I know that they're geeky. We I just want to have more fun with it. We, yeah, we just mm -hmm. need to extract that geeky from them. And, right. and that's our mission this summer to kind of figure that out for them. Um, so we're thinking maybe we want to reach out to our culinary students. Delhi is pretty known for their culinary cuisine. Um, so we don't entirely know what angle we're going to work, but we're going to see if we can reel them in. Um, we almost had a guest speaker this last year. So we're going to push for that a little bit more too, maybe kind of in sub of having like a talk that our faculty put on, you know, maybe not, but everything is still kind of in the very open planning stages. But if we could get a really good guest speaker, we almost had one that um, I think he was involved in the art for Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work on that real hard for this next year, see if we can get it. And that just goes back to the idea of pulling on your community and seeing yes. who has connections, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and it's funny because the person that knows this um, guy, and I wish I could remember his name because I think anyone who geeks out there would, would recognize his name, and I, I can't I think of it, and I'm sorry I failed you, but <laughs> um, it, it turns out that um, our uh, the person who runs our Barnes & Noble bookstore babysat his kids. So we might be able to get wow. him to come in. Connections so, come in all forms. You never know, yeah. It's who you, know. you don't know the power of your community until you start reaching out yeah. and, and, and grabbing at, at, at all of those interests, everything. 
And I think you also need to find someone in the area who has some pet bearded dragons to bring along. And, and right. I know there's clearly that. a demand for it. <laughs> the thing. Yes. There's gotta be somebody who owns them and be happy to bring them along and Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like we have a veterinary science program here, cool. so yeah. we have vet tech students that have, you know, beagles and all kinds of different animals on campus all the time, so it's mm -hmm. not entirely outside of the realm of possibility. Can you imagine the beagles coming over in costume? Yes, I can, um, and I would love it. Yeah. You can put a little cape on a, on a bearded dragon, sure. Yeah, it's a costume yeah. contest, so. Absolutely. Pet costume contest, there you go. That would be fun, yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I can say, see, we respond to your your quests and comments. We're paying yeah. attention. <laughs> so, good. so we're welcoming any questions now. Um, obviously, our emails are up there. If we're more than happy to help you if you're thinking about planning something similar mm -hmm. or you have questions that we don't get to answer before the end of the session, um, please feel free to reach out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We do have um, a few questions that did come in. Yes. So um, thank you so much, uh, Caitlin and Liz. Like I said, um, this is one of ones you know, definitely want to hear what you guys did. And it sounds like it was, it was really um, just like a, a, any sort of a, a you know con, a comic con or something um, at an academic level. <laughs> And size and and having those the, the budget that you have to work with uh, you know working at university it can be it's not it can be a struggle. Mm -hmm. But um and we got some comments so yeah like great ideas and thanks for um where go, the marketing tips and timeline. I cannot yes I agree total wholeheartedly the the tips about how to have lists and keep track of things I've got my pieces of paper here from previous big talks in my libraries my I notes from last year to tell me what to do this year because a year later I'm not gonna remember. <laughs> Yep. What I thought about, yeah. Mm -hmm. You never know. You know. Like we said, it's so important to make sure your marketing stays fresh because especially our college students, you know, I think they get used to seeing the same things mm -hmm. on those digital signs and maybe they only skim that email that goes out. So, you know, as many venues as you can get yes. your marketing in mm -hmm. and just keep it fresh, keep changing it. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Now, um, we do have some questions here. If anybody does have any questions, go ahead and type them in um, to the question section of your GoToWebinar interface, and I can read them off here. Um, I think many of these questions came in before you got to certain parts of your presentation, because I believe <laughs> these are things that you had talked about. Somebody want to know about, did you have a time limit for each area, or was it all going on at the same time? You could do what you wanted. I, it was, it was kind of fluid. Yeah, we didn't really limit anything. It didn't seem to be a problem. Yeah, I mean, the only things that we really had timed were the escape rooms because sure. know, they need to be. Um, we had a set time for when we would like announce the costume contest winners and things like that. But like Kate said, everything else like board games and when you could come up and say create your D and D character with our physics instructor, mm -hmm. you know, all of that was very fluid. Um, we wanted people to be able to walk in the door and just take it in on their time. Yeah, it was pretty organic, particularly the gaming. Mm -hmm. like, it was kind of just they sort of policed themselves. Same with the gamer lounge. We had yeah. Yeah. a couple. Um, gaming system set up in there and they really did a good job. I could see it getting maybe a little out of control if we do go back to having 400 plus people, yeah. you know, it might be something that needs to happen mm -hmm. in the future. But for now, you know, they were pretty good. They didn't really need any interference on our part. Nope. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have as many in the second year? I no, we had about 200 the second year. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. You just well, need I think it's just that, you know, they all go home on the weekend. Right. So. The timing. Yeah. That's why you're going back to the weeknight. Or mm, if they lacked in numbers, they made up for an enthusiasm for sure. <laughs> yeah. They but wanted to be there and they had the time to be here. Yeah. It wasn't just a matter of people wandering in. They yeah. think they're going to study for the evening. And then we yeah. had, do you remember that one gentleman? He came in costume and he came like an hour before. Yes. <laughs> he was so excited that he was like, can I help you set up? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I. Yes, I sure. guess you can. Yeah. Yeah. Have all the help yeah. we want. We need, yeah. The <laughs> whole night. And, and I think that's uh, that's just it. So we added a couple extra hours, too. We made the event longer mm -hmm. um, the second time around. And these kids came in at the beginning, and they stayed right up until the end of the event. And even then, like, we were very lucky. They're such good kids. But they were like, oh, can we help you clean up? And 
oh, do you have ideas for next year? Like they were hitting yeah. us up right after. <laughs> so yeah, very enthusiastic the second year. That's awesome, success. Um, we had quite a few questions about vendors. Um, what types of vendors, who were your vendors, um, what type of organizations from off campus did you partner with or at least try to? And I think you did give a lot of information about that. Yeah, comic book stores, local bookstores, mm -hmm. artists, you know, it depends on who's in your community, but those were the big ones. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and like we said before, you really want to get a feel for what you have to offer in your area. It doesn't necessarily have to follow like a Marvel theme, you know, and those are the vendors you reach out to that might be applicable. Like, you know, we reach out to the movie theater and, you know, some of them might give you posters, which are, you know, you can use to decorate with. Um, our local one does not. Um, there's a lot of different, like we have, there's gaming stops in the area that might give you um, gift cards, gift certificates for donating prizes. Like there's a lot of different ways to reach out. And that I think that's just very individual community yeah. based yeah and i think if you come up with this idea i mean like you guys and like your your director people who are going to come up with this are in the geek world already mm -hmm. and may already know oh i need i know this comic shop i know this bookstore works with us before i know this gaming shop let's go to them and find where the people are that we could bring in yeah for sure and that definitely helps yeah mm -hmm. yeah because I, I, I didn't know a darn thing about it. <laughs> I've learned a lot. Yeah. Um, so do, 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 do. Oh, uh, here are some librarians. We would love to have this at my library, but with a small public library and a small staff, it'll be difficult. Um, and she wants to also know, what is the cost on a limited budget? I know. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to say, so we didn't pay anything for door prizes. Um, everybody that tabled brought a door prize. And like I said, those that didn't table um, were really happy to donate. So you might be able to do a lot with that. Um, we didn't buy Legos. I think our um, architecture club brought their own. Um, I think we just paid for some crafting stuff. Craft which was, supplies, like tablecloths for the yeah. different tables that the vendors mm -hmm. were on. and. So it sounds very similar to any library program, really. I mean, it's just a different yeah. focus. Yeah, um, yeah there really weren't really too many big expenses. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't. We were lucky to not have any cost for food, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that was zero. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. I mean, and we really didn't. Um, sometimes we pay um, our local library to run off some 3D printing items to kind of give away oh. to or as swag in mm -hmm. our swag bags and stuff, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they partner with us really well and their prices are really low. So if I had mm -hmm. to guess, we probably kept it at around a hundred dollars, maybe less. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually have a comment from someone else to help answer that question. Nice. Which actually kind of plays right off what you just said, partnering. Um, and this person is saying, tell the last small library that just asked about how to do this with a small staff and a limited budget um, to partner with other small libraries in your area. That's what a group of six tiny libraries in one county did in Iowa. They held a highly successful con that they've repeated since. So it doesn't have to be just you. Reach out to other libraries near you and see if everybody wants to get together and do some sort of event. And you can all share in the, the work and the cost and, and whatever. I think that's a fantastic idea. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, that's how we were able to provide those escape rooms that mm -hmm. were the most popular thing both years is that we knew that the public library over the hill ran them and had the stuff that they could bring to us. So yeah, yeah. Yep. awesome. All they asked was for us to put their name out there, and we're like, absolutely, you got it. <laughs> a thousand times over. Yeah. And that library has the original question said, "Wow, thank you for the advice." Definitely. All right. Um, just a couple of the last few things here. Um, one place that they had a library con, they had a local petting zoo come at theirs, and a Stranger Things themed escape room. I've seen oh, yes. those. That's one that I've been interested in mm. putting together, maybe. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it, since it's been so popular, we've been thinking, like, we should really put together a few just to hold a standalone programming, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And then one other tip, I'll give this one, and then we'll kind of wrap it up so we can move on uh, to our next uh, set of presenters. Um, our library kind of outgrown our little library, so we partnered with the city and moved it to the city park. Doesn't even have to That's be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's like we said, it's just about figuring out what works for your community yeah. and what they want to see and what talents and treasures you can pull. Yeah. You never know. 
So and this one I just want to confirm, yes, Canva was the name of the graphic site, C-A-N-V-A. Just go ahead and Google that Canva and you will find it out there free, easy to use. So um, I think we'll have to wrap that up for the questions and everything. Um, definitely reach out to Liz and Caitlin there, their emails with any other questions or info you want from them, tips, tricks, what to do with your escape room at your library, uh, whatever size it may be. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. We'd love to hear your questions and how you are doing things at your library. You know, we like to bounce ideas off mm -hmm. all the time. All right. So, all right. That will um, wrap it up for our 11 a.m. Sim. Thank you so much, guys. Um, that Thank was a lot of fun. I wish I went to SUNY Del High now. <laughs> I'm yes. now in college, though, but yeah. <laughs> everyone there's having a great time. All right.